Alrighty guys, we're back for some thrilling vampires, and this is a Lost Caverns of Ixalan standard brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked rockin' Valderan Thrill Seeker in this one. The three mana, one one with backup two, and when this creature enters the battlefield, you put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. If that's another creature, it also gains the abilities printed below. So, it gains for one mana, sacrifice this creature. It deals damage equal to its power to any target. Dude, every time we've played with Valder and Thrillseeker, it's been an absolute MVP, and boy oh boy, does it ever know how to pack damage through. In a vampire build like this, I think it's going to be wonderful. Here on the top end, we have Roaming Throne. It's about four mana, four, four. It is a golem, but as it enters the battlefield, you get to choose a creature type. Of course, you're going to choose vampires. Oh, it also has wards too, by the way. That does go a long way. Roaming Throne is the chosen type in addition to its other types. If a triggered ability of another creature you control of a chosen type triggers, it triggers an additional time. So you call vampires and then when you play that Thrill Seeker, you get that back up to twice. <laughs> and then all the other like ETB effects in here happen twice as well, which we have a ton of like Vampire Socialite. It's like two mana, two, two, Menace, Vampire Noble, Rock and Rakdos colors up there. And when it ETBs, if an opponent lost a life this turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on each other vampire you control. Oh my. As long as an opponent lost life this turn, each other vampire you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it as well. Pretty cool card, man. It really is. Of course, other ETB effects like Blood Tithe Harvester, getting a couple blood tokens off of that while Roaming Thrones down sounds good to me. Uh, ETB effects like Epicure, Ping in the opponent's face, also giving you blood tokens. And like the blood tokens filtering cards out is actually really powerful. I, I can't tell you the number of times where we filtered with the blood token just to find the winning card. So <laughs> it happens often. Also, since we are discarding in here with blood tokens, of course, Markov Baron, also a vampire noble, three mana, two, two with Convoke, Lifelink, other vampires you control, get plus one, plus one, and then Madness for two and a black. Madness is if you discard this card, discard it into exile whenever you do cast it for its madness cost or put it into your graveyard so if you do end up discarding this to a blood token you can go ahead and cast it out so not only did you filter out your hand you get to cast it out so a little bit of card advantage there pretty cool so we have other cards to uh discard markov baron with like bitter triumph trying this one out again hopefully it works out a little bit better this time it's a two mana instant speed as an additional cost to cast this spell discard a card or pay three life so yeah if you end up playing bitter triumph and you discard the markov baron and then you can cast out the baron at that point you have five mana on the board so maybe it is turn five but that's a really decent turn five man so <laughs> so destroy target creature or planeswalker also hitting planeswalkers is pretty important so something go for the throat can't do for example so nice okay more vampires in here we have a couple bloodthirsty adversaries uh, there's some stuff that we would not mind casting back from the grave, including like uh, Bitter Triumph, right? But we also have like Play With Fire in here. Just poking the opponent's face is going to be pretty important, especially when we do have that Vampire Socialite that uh, likes damage to be done to our opponent. So yeah, uh, Play With Fire is a good one. <laughs> also, more ways to poke the opponent's face. Kumano faces Kakazan made the cut too. So it's just a three of this time round, but we have so many great two drops to lead out after the Kumano. Uh, that it just feels right in this build to me, you know? More vampires, Preacher of the Schism. <laughs> so, three mana, two, four, Vampire Cleric. It has Death Touch, and whenever Preacher of the Schism attacks, the player with the most life or tied for the most life... Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, whenever they attack the player with the most life, <laughs> so, or tied for the most life you create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink for some reason uh, that reads very oddly for me anyways whenever preacher of the schism attacks while you have the most life uh, or are tied for the most life you draw a card and lose one life i saw an opponent playing with this and it generated a ton of value throughout that game for them there was a moment where i was like oh are they gonna take this trade into my 4-4 and they didn't and i was like what that's crazy that would have been a great trade but then it just kept generating value for them and i was like holy cow i i understand now uh so i think the two of in here is actually going to be really good i have a top end vampire here too a blood letter of aklazotes this is a four mana two four with flying it is a vampire demon cool if an opponent would lose life during your turn they lose twice that much life instead. 
Oh, buddy, uh, let me tell you what. If you pull off a blood litter of Aklazotes and then next turn you drop like a thrill seeker on like something simple, like a blood tithe harvester, and you get that swing with the harvester and then you pay that one and sacrifice the harvester and then you just, it's just slam in damage to the opponent's face, man. That sounds absolutely wild. Uh, of course, the phrasing here, it does say during your turn. So yeah, just something to note, I suppose. All right, the mana base. We got a couple of restless vents in here. We got four Cavern of Souls. That way our vampires don't get countered. We also have a single Valderan Estate. We have Haunted Ridge, a Black Cleave Cliffs. And uh, this time round, opting for no pain land. Leaning a little bit red because the deck is leaning a little bit red. Uh, hopefully that doesn't end up holding up our Blood Litter of Aklazotes with the triple black in the casting cost, right? Van and Meyer, Crucible of Defiance, only one honorable mention over here and it's lightning strike i thought about just dropping the bitter triumph and just going up a lightning strike because i do think just pinging the opponent's face all the time is going to be pretty important and you know blood letter of aklazotes totally works with burn <laughs> lose life during your turn lose twice that much life all of a sudden that uh, lightning strike to their face would be six damage so yeah definitely something to consider maybe we just want even more burn packed in uh, but there's going to be plenty of moments too where you're gonna need to take out the opponent's shielded or something so i opted for bitter triumph this time around but honorable mention for a reason okay guys i think that's everything already let's go ahead take it into some ranked and see how we do Okay, we'll see if we can get right into that first game. Yeah, <laughs> easy peasy. What am I expecting from the build? Honestly, I'm expecting a little bit, guys. Maybe I shouldn't be, but I, I do think there's a lot of power packed in here. I think there's a lot of uh, potential for just an explosion of damage. Okay, no black source for the Bitter Triumph, but I think we keep this. I don't mind this hand at all. Probably drawn to land here soon enough. Ooh, mono red going first. Well, that should be scary for us. Okay, I'll get my mountain down. Probably going to be Harvester, right? No reason to get the Vampire Socialite down just yet. Against, like, mono red, the lifelink is really going to come into play. So, ooh... Big damage from their turn two. Going in with a 3-4 Swift Spear. Well, Darren Estate, yeah, no black source for that bitter triumph. Okay. Go ahead and get Cavern of Souls down. Get a call vampire. Uh, Blood Tithe Harvester just doesn't block well here. Definitely in a sticky situation. <laughs> they got great swings. And uh, probably great burn if they don't want this harvester to be around. Uh, luckily, though, we do. We are seeing decent mana. We might not have that turn for blood letter without another black source. And we'd have to pay one for the Valderan estate to be that black source for the vampire, too. Woo, buddy. <laughs> that is a lot of stuff, man. Oh my goodness, do we block here? <laughs> seven going down to seven, or we block and take five. You know what? I, I think we're I think we're gonna die either way. Mono red is really doing the mono red thing. <laughs> um I, I don't know if there's gonna be a lot of ways around this anyways. Okay, so we'll get Valderan Estate down. And maybe like the Baron could do the thing. Um we could go Harvester number two, take out the Swift Spear. They got the plus one. The Commando's flipping next turn. Oh, yeah, dude. We're like, we're super dead. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to do the fun thing here. Get a, actually, now Harvester can block. Well, on the ground. You know what? <laughs> I will keep it back. I was going to say, I was going to say, like, let's just do the fun thing. We'll swing with the little vampire and let them win on their turn four. But... Now that Harvester blocks successfully on the ground and we get a little bit of lifelink back from the Baron, there's a chance that they don't have any burn in hand. So, yeah, guys, this was our turn three, really showcasing the how terrifying Mono Red can be when they go first. 
Oh man. I'd love to. They start with the Chandra, get that extra red source. Chandra is underplayed in mono red. I feel I I like I I truly feel that. Might be one of the uh, first opponents in the recent like months that I've seen playing Chandra in their mono red list. What about you guys? Do you guys play Chandra dress to kill? I do feel like it's super underplayed. So Monstrous Rage. Okay, we're going to do our dandiest to take out the Swiss Spear because they'll have to double down on non-creature spell to get it above the four. We want that life gain too. We're taking four. Let's see if it's going to be Monstrous Rage onto the Swiss Spear. Or mo Monstrous Rage like anywhere, but preferably on one of the uh, creatures that I blocked. Could also just be Play With Fire Face. We take six total, trades with the Swift Spear, and then we gain two for the Baron. We go play with fire on our lifelink, actually. Oh, because it gets rid of the, uh, yep, yep, yep. It gets rid of the Harvester buff, which lets them keep the Swift Spear around. Okay. Yeah, and no lifelink either. Okay, yeah, that was a, that was a solid play opponent. That was really good. The no triple black source for the blood later. Not like it matters a whole lot here, I'd say. <laughs> um, and we, to play the vampire socialite, we'd have to take one. <laughs> brutal, brutal stuff, man. But we actually got to take our turn four, so we survived. <laughs> they plus the Chandra. Let's drop the GGs. Hello, a mono red player. Whew, looking super scary, man. It's, it's moments like this, it's it's why, it, this is when I realize, oh, that's why everyone's playing way too much removal in every build, right? Even then, even then, they had a wild setup there. We had like a whole bunch of removal packed in. Um, so something to note in that first game, um, the mana base did hold us up, I'd say quite a bit in that one. So... If we saw one of our black sources, there was a potential for taking out that Swiss Spear a little bit earlier. Or, yeah, I don't think we were going to get to turn five very easily, so... Oh, yeah, here we go. Except now, we're going to have to start with Haunted Ridge to make sure that we have that turn two. We're definitely going to need to see more mana off the top as well. Okay, let's give it a shot. I don't know if this would normally be a mulligan... Uh, that's why giving it a shot to, to find out. And to, uh, man off the top. Beautiful. Beautiful. Still start with the Haunted Ridge, though. I'd rather not take the damage for the estate early on. Coward Barons. Looks like we're going up against two very different decks for the opening games here. <laughs> very different. A Socialite. Maybe, maybe the Menace can get through and we can get an extra boost on the Thrill Seeker. Rexian Arena, wow. Uh, maybe it's actually Preacher of the Schism for the turn. If we wait an extra turn to try to get... Ew, okay. I guess a 4-4 Menace is pretty good though, isn't it? But then we won't get the buff on it too. Okay, let's go Preacher of the Schism. Comes in as a 3-5, guys. That's actually really sick. That's good stats. <laughs> Hard stats to get around. If this was up against the Mono Red, for example, that's a terrific blocker. Very much a... Uh, oh, Sunset Revelry. Okay, very much like a Wandering Emperor style build. Probably a ton of spot removal too, so... Got to go for the throat. That's number one out of the build. They do have the double block for the Menace now. Cavern of Souls, we will call, of course, a uh, vampire. Now that's our fourth. Roaming Throne is not a bad play against this build because of that ward too. A lot to consider here though. Do you guys suppose they just double block this without any worries? Probably. So let's get the throne down, unfortunately. And no attacks. Uh, that double block effectively turns... Okay, 
effectively turns their sunset revelry into another piece of spot removal. You know what I mean? So we're, we're going to hold back for now. We had a decent amount of options here. Like, for example, we could have played with fired one of the one ones to let the menace get through. And then like Thrill Seeker could have come down, buffed that menace and still gotten there. Um, but I don't know. Thrill, Thrill Seeker can be super explos explosive. So maybe just saving it for later on or once we actually set up with the blood letter. Rexian Arena. Wow. They're going to be drawing so much, guys. Oh, my goodness. Again, the double block is pretty bad. Pretty bad. So I might hold that back and just play Bloodletter. They chump? No. No, because if Roaming Throne gets through, then it's 8 damage. Should I be playing around a board wipe, though? Probably. Yeah, so they'd much rather chump the throne and let the Vampire uh, Socialite go through. They decide removal, so that must mean they don't have a board wipe in hand. No. Okay, they go for the chump. <laughs> okay. So this is still four damage getting through, thanks to the blood letter. And I suppose we should be concerned about a board wipe. That would be pretty bad, because our hand isn't, like, set up to reestablish a board state. If we can survive the turn without a board wipe, then... I think we might be able to get there next turn. No, Sunfa. <laughs> okay. Oh, what? There's the adversary. Nothing in the grave that we want to hit right now, but um, play with fire. Real seeker. Yeah, Sunfall, guys. Oh, man, that's brutal stuff. So if I played around it last turn, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Let's just, let's play everything except for the Bloodthirsty Adversary. First, we'll start by seeing what's on top. Oh, Baron. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep that. Thrill, Thrill Seeker? Buff itself, it's a 3-3. Three, three, and it still has that ability. That's fine. Uh, Kumano comes down with the ping. Oh, yeah, dude. If that blood letter was on the board. Oh, man. <laughs> Going up against uh, Orzhov, though, you do have to expect your creatures not to survive. One is down to 11. Still worth playing all this out. We got like this Bloodthirsty Adversary for 5. Oh, back up to 15. They've gained 8 off the Revelry so far. Okay, next creature. So now we have to anticipate like Wandering Emperor. We go... We have, we have, uh, we have great swings here. Terrific swings. And... Um, oh, they can power up their 4-4, four four, though. We don't have terrific swings. All right, I'm going to take the turn to set up and see what's on top. I'm going to say, like, we still have three open. We could play the Markov. But, yeah. Incubator, 4-4. Four four. Cavern of Souls to the bottom. Take the turn to set up, I say. Commando flips next turn. If we swing the adversary into the 4-4... Four four, yeah, I'd, fr I'd much rather wait to buff this board state. Okay, brutal stuff. We we have an uphill battle after that sunfall for sure. When it goes down to 11, the uh, double arena is keeping their hand nice and stocked, but also dealing a lot of damage to them. So they must have more life gain packed in, I would say, right? Oh, they didn't power up incubator. That might mean they have another board wipe. Oh. I guess they could just wait, depending on what their plan was for the turn, right? Like, if they still have a Wandering Emperor, then, I mean, they could do that twice, even. Future of the Schism. Cool. I mean, at this point, though, it's Markov Baron. 4-4 four, four probably blocks our Thrill Seeker. We can activate the Thrill Seeker ability. Hmm. It's really easy for me to forget that uh, Markov Baron also has Convoke. You know what I mean? That's really easy for me to forget. Yeah, guys, we got a full swing because we have to anticipate every like all of our creatures dying next turn anyway. So like the full swing's coming in. Let's see where they end up blocking here. Not even going to power up the incubator. 
Taken 2. Okay, um, the Thrill Seeker ability you can do uh, whenever. So I'm just going to save that for their turn and see what happens here. We might still be able to get there. Yeah, they're dealing a ton of damage to themselves, and they didn't play anything the last couple turns, which is super bizarre to me. Sunfall. <laughs> okay. Thrill Seeker to the face. Bring him down to three. That's good. That's good. I'll tell you what. Thrill Seeker off the top ends it without a swing, so it's like... Okay, Shieldred. Okay. Okay, Haunted Ridge. Mana is not something I wanted to see. They're going to be taking two from the arena. All right, guys. No choice. We just play it all out. We just play it all out, man. Uh, the We could start making blood tokens with the Valderan Estate, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Shieldred actually gains them more life off of the arenas. Oh, crap. Yeah, now they're not losing one life from the arenas. Now they're gaining one life off of each arena draw. Oh, crap. Guys, Shieldred's really, really bad. <laughs> Brutal first couple games. Um, I feel like the, the deck did a thing, especially in this one. Against Mono Red, we didn't even get a chance to do a thing, but... Oh, yeah. Like, the setup and everything. Pretty beautiful. Not giving up yet, because if we do, like, we do have removal, a little bit, but we have it in here. If Shieldred gets removed, they could always play the second one. They still have yet to power up the incubators, too, because they could start swinging. Okay. A full swing, obviously, we got to trade the Preacher into Shieldred for sure, but I, I don't think they even want to. Oh. Not even going to swing with their 4-4. At this point, they are set up to play the long game. Except they have 32 cards in the deck, so they do have to they do have to win before they deck themselves out with the uh, arenas. <laughs> oh, Baron, dude. Okay. Well. Yeah, that trades there pretty nicely. We would draw, lose three life because of their shieldred. Unfortunately, guys, I think we're like super dead. Let's get the Baron down. That, uh, that brings the Preacher to a 3-5, so it does swing against their 4-4 uh, four, four quite nicely. Uh, we'll get the draw off of the Preacher. Well, maybe, right? They could They could have more spot removal here too. Their hand is nice and stocked up. Scary looking Orzov build, man. <laughs> A huge contrast in the uh, the two decks we've played against. Oh, removal for the Preacher before the swing. Oh. Looks like they're okay with us losing three life for the card draw. That Wandering Emperor finally going to hit, maybe? Like, this is definitely a Wandering Emperor style build, right? Oh, it's a land. <laughs> um, I don't know if they yeah, they want to chump here. I was gonna say I don't I don't think they want to take this three. Because they don't know what we could have drawn. We did the Empire. Uh oh man. Ends up being a trade anyways. Might as well play that swamp. At this point, being at 13, let's see if the opponent ends up swinging in to try to wrap this up next turn. Because they totally could. They could drop, like, go for the throw on the Baron, power up the Incubator on their turn. A swing for 11 past the turn, let Shieldred wrap it up, right? I think that's... I mean, that's probably likely. Let's see what ends up happening, though. Take, take one, gain two. And then they gain two off the original draw as well. Man, that looks so brutal. Oh, man. <laughs> wedding announcement. This is one of those builds, though. Like, if you are up against Mono Red, I guess, like, the Sunset Revelry happens to be really good against Mono Red, right? Giving you those chump blockers. Giving you that life gain. We've been seeing a decent amount of Sunset Revelry, but sometimes I'm surprised we don't see even more of it. Like, now that I'm saying that, you know what I mean? I feel like it does do a lot. 
against those uh, super aggressive builds. All right, we'll gladly take that seven. I'm surprised it was no uh, spot removal for the Baron. A shield is still chilling. Comes through. Let's see what's on top. Since they sung with two, they get the draws off of the wedding announcements. They're going back up to 19. <laughs> I'm curious how much uh, life gain they actually got throughout this game. It wasn't too much overall until the Shieldred landed, of course. Okay, more land for some reason. Get a blood token. Swap out that land. Go down to two because of Shieldred. <laughs> Ooh, Blood Tithe Harvester. I don't know what we would have wanted to see. But, like, I know that we wanted to see more. The opponent has 24 cards remaining in the build. 23 cards after the final draw as well. All right. Uh, we'll give them a chance to go ahead and get that fun swing. Hey, there's the removal. I wonder if they just... I wonder if they just saw that. Go ahead and get your quest done, opponent. Dropped us the GG in return. Thank ya. Yeah, overall, I think we had a great chance. I do. I think that was anyone's game. Uh, the double sunfall was brutal, but mainly it was the first sunfall. So maybe, just maybe, if I played it a little slower um, and prioritized cards in a different order, cards that wouldn't have been initially picked up by sunfall, right? Like, I, I believe we had... We had the Blood Letter, but we had the Kamano and the Play With Fire in hand, too. For that turn, I opted for the Blood Letter, which I guess in that scenario was pretty greedy, as we were trying to get maximum amount of damage from the Play With Fire and the Kamano, whereas just playing around the Sunfall or other board wipe would have been much better there. Just play the Kamano out, uh, get or keep the Play With Fire open. And then when they do inevitably wipe the board, then we can play Blood Letter and try again. Okay, good hand. Opponent goes first. Um, yeah, I guess that could be concerning. <laughs> Bar's headquarters. Not too bad. Nothing to worry about. Okay, we'll start with Haunted Ridge. And then Cavern of Souls. And if they just, like, drop a land and pass, we don't got to worry about a make disappear, which is really nice. Get the socialite down. Which isn't, like, the most ideal to drop, I suppose. We'd much rather play this down after we already have a board state of vampires, but... Bramble familiar. Okay. It's been a while. I, I kind of forget what it does. <laughs> we saw our one drop. Vampire Socialite. Yep. We still we still play it out. We still play out that mana. Probably going to be Preacher instead of Thrill Seeker. Okay, so. Uh, they can tap it for your green source. They can pay one of the green, tap it, discard a card, return Bramble Familiar to its owner's hand. Okay, Virtue taking out our Vampire Socialite. They go for the swing for two. Okay, we'll get the swamp down. We got our triple black for when we see our blood letter. And we'll get the preacher down. Yep, roaming throne. Oh, buddy. Oh, we got sick lines of play in here, man. Uh, Leyline Binding. Wow. Going for it. Wait, are they missing mana? Holy cow. How unlucky. How unlucky is the opponent getting right now, guys? Well, Ward 2 is going to be excellent to get down. <laughs> Ward 2 is really, really good to get down when the opponent is missing mana. Some tap land. They found it. And that's good, at least. Leyline Binding for 3. Uh, Ward 2. Yeah, that's brutal stuff. <laughs> what a draw, dude. What a draw. Oh my goodness. You know what we should be scared of, though? Another board wipe, right? Just, like, play untapped land, sunfall. <laughs> Dude, if that happens, that would be awful. Okay, gain a bit of life. Mm, I 
think that Thrill Seeker is going to wrap this up next turn. Oh, they still got two mana, though. They did find Untapped Source off the Herd Migration. Gained three there. So, like, Thrill Seeker comes down. We fly in the air, unless this is removal, right? Okay. So, let's try the Thrill Seeker. They might have Leyline Binding. Uh, let's put it on both of our creatures then, right? They block on the ground here. They take four. Okay. Yeah, we put it on both of our creatures. Because we don't know if they have another Leyline Binding in hand. Or other removal. Because they're going to take eight from the Blood Letter. Then we sacrifice uh, the Roaming Throne. Oh, I guess they decided just to take the damage. Aw, man, I wanted to use the Thrill Seeker's ability there. <laughs> GG opponent, uh, it definitely sucked that they ended up not seeing mana for... Did they only miss it for one turn? The Bramble Familiar helped them cast out. Had they seen more mana, I think that game would still be going. However, that being said, boy oh boy, did we have a hand and a half, huh? So, yeah, anyways, uh, what could have happened there, right? is you don't want to sacrifice the blood letter because then it won't do the double damage because it's not on the board anymore. <laughs> so you'd want to keep that on the board, sacrifice the roaming throne, deal a six, and then it's actually double, so it's an extra 12. Um, so having that roaming throne to have the Thrill Seeker ability happen twice was pretty cool, man. Uh, also, if you didn't have the throne, you could have targeted itself. You don't have to tap for that bottom ability. It's just uh, tap, sacrifice, or uh, pay one mana, sacrifice this creature. We also could have just put it onto the Thr Thrill Seeker itself if we wanted to sacrifice that for extra damage too. If we didn't want to sacrifice that, wow, we got Play With Fire in hand. Uh, even Valderan Epicure would have pinged two to the opponent's face. That's pretty cool. Nice, dude. Cool lineups, man. Yeah, those first two games were pretty brutal, but we still got a chunk of power packed in. Uh, kind of like, I kind of believe in the build right now, man. Let's keep going. 32 minutes in, I think we can easily get one or two more games in what do you guys think of the build so far uh, what kind of vampires have you been playing do you think it would have been worthwhile trying to squeeze some of like the orzov vampires into the build as well or do you think rakdos is fine for this style hmm haunted ridge holding us up a little bit all right I mean, we definitely try this. Opponent goes first, unfortunately. Oh, got that mana. Oh, you know what? I'll start with Cavern of Souls. All Vampire. I don't know if there's anything for one blue that could have actually countered a creature, but still. I saw the blue. I was like, okay, Cavern of Souls is probably best bet. Cut down for Epicure number one. Vampire Socialite kind of in that awkward position again of, okay, it's a two drop, but it's not buffing our board state of vampires. Oh. Bloodthirsty Adversary does the job, though. Should we go with that? Swing for two. Try to buff the board next turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Can't be countered. So some spot removal would be good for the opponent. Like, cut down is already... One is already out, so... Oh, no! <laughs> Not again, guys! I, I keep running face first into these knights all the time. <laughs> Lord Skitter. Okay. So, we probably still go Epicure. That ping's face, Socialite. It's, it's definitely a lot worse now that we lost one of our creatures. But it's still pretty good, isn't it? over like preacher of the schism for now and stuff right maybe it is this actually because the sooner we can start swinging with the preacher the better oh yeah dude virtue of loyalty has been super rough maybe i maybe i need to stop swinging into two open mana well if they have a white source over there right but then sometimes you end up playing around a ghost like how many times have we held back and the opponent just, like, didn't have a Wandering Emperor. Like, that seems to be equally as bad sometimes. We could take... Speaking of Wandering Emperor, yeah, they got four open over there. 
So we could take the turn to set up again. We could see where this lands. Ah, jeez. Okay. I'm going to go Epicure and Socialite and keep the blood token open, I guess. <laughs> the reason, like, that pings through without a swing, so that buffs the board. That buffs both of our vampires without without a swing, what I'm getting at. And then I suppose we play around a board wipe? Nah, let's go for it, man. <laughs> These builds have been super rough. A virtue of loyalty, you know, might mean that there's no board wipe. Now that these are tapped, those are targets for their Wandering Emperor as well. We get a draw. All right, if they take out Preacher of the Schism with the Wandering Emperor's minor two, there's Wandering Emperor. Then we get to keep the other vampires. That's good at least. They could go... Okay, so they're back up to 20, but we still get that draw. Land. Ew. I don't know if that's something we want. Yeah, what do you guys think? Swinging into potentially, uh, like, a guaranteed Wandering Emperor? Or do you guys think we should have held back? Because they still could have dropped Wandering Emperor and got rid of, like, one of our other tapped creatures after we convoked anyways. So maybe, like, hold the convoke back, but it doesn't really look like a board wipe style of build. It might, it might have them in there, though, as, like, emergencies. Deep Cavern Bat taking the Blood Tithe Harvester is actually pretty brutal. So we really don't want to see a land off the top, but these Blood Tokens could really come in handy. Restless Vents, that's not bad. All right. I'm going to keep the Restless Vents, first of all. Because that could go a long way against a build like this. Depending on what that last card in their hand is, we do have a decent swing at that Wandering Emperor. Woohoo! That was worthwhile, huh? Oh, yeah. That was so worthwhile. And then we'll get the vents down, too. It can't be countered. That's so good. Menace at Wandering Emperor would mean they'd have to double block or let the Wandering Emperor die. Everything else to face could be fine. If they double block the Baron, that's still pretty good for us, huh? Okay. Yeah, while we have the creatures around, we should probably do these swings. Uh, especially since they do have their five mana, so when it comes time for the Virtue of Loyalty... <laughs> uh, this is going to be rough, man. These rats are going to start to hurt after a couple turns. Luckily, they can't block. does seem to be getting held up by the opponent, so hopefully it's not spot removal. Our last card in hand, I, I feel like they've seen a lot already, so let's hope it's not just spot removal. Nice. Nice. Not bad for us at all, dude. We'll get that Restless Vents down, ready to power up for next turn. What's that last card? It's a Rafine's Tower. Okay, filter that out. Yeah, so they do have Virtue of Loyalty for the turn, regardless of what they draw. Their Deep Cavern Bat gets a buff. Thank goodness these rats can't block. They swing with the Deep Cavern Bat because it's going to untap, of course. Oh! What a top deck, dude. So where did they end up blocking here? One of the Barons for sure. Oh, I mean, we play this in swing. <laughs> like, period, right? Again, it comes down to, while we have our creatures, I don't think it matters too much. Like, we have to plug the damage through. Nice. GG opponent, GG. Did they actually have any successful blocks? They, what were they at? 13, right? Uh, let, let's just take a look real quick here. They are at 13. If they blocked Deep Cavern Bat into one of the chunky ones... Okay, and then they trade here. Was it going to be 14 damage no matter what? So it came down to whatever was left in their hand, which I guess was nothing. Especially, 
I don't know what it could have been, too. Like, even if this was an open black source, cut down wouldn't have hit anything on this board. Yeah, nice, dude. Holy cow, that was a top deck and a half, huh? 40 minutes in, what do you guys think? One more? This is a good time. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on, server. Come on, I believe in you. Take, take a deep breath. <laughs> and get us into the next game. <laughs> Uh, vampires have always been, uh, so fun, huh? It's always, a, it's always a, a great time playing, like, thematic decks and everything. Feels good to get some victories, too, after the, uh, after all of my holiday brews getting absolutely obliterated. <laughs> uh, opponent goes first, huh? Okay, well, we keep this. Okay, starting with that mountain's good. I don't know if we want to go estate or just... Yeah, estate take the one might be bad, but keeping the... Uh... Yeah, never mind. I, I'm not going to keep those as utility. Get that harvester down and see if it survives the turn. No burn from the opponent there. Oh, topiary stomper. Could be another variant of dinos. Seen a lot of different variations of dinosaurs, guys. I mean, they they all have the gruel colors, but still. <laughs> Commando. So swing, get the socialite down. It's actually two three. I want to swing, but I actually just want to just stack this board state as well. So that's what I'm going to do. Stack this board state. If we swing next turn, then buff the board with the Vampire Socialite. Or if we just have like an amazing swing beforehand, we could just play the Markov Baron. A triumphant chomp. All right, all right. One piece of removal. Opiary Stomper. They're getting really close to being able to block with these. Okay, how do I... Ooh, a second Socialite. Oh, okay. Well, then we start with the swing for six. And this will get these above the stomper. The stompers are about ready to block, unfortunately, guys. But this is really good. This is really, really good. <laughs> oh, buddy. A couple five fours and a couple three threes. Okay, the stompers are in action. And they have a great swing this turn. Oh, trumpeting connoisseur. Oh, buddy. Glimpse the core. Grab a forest. No blocks. These have menace, so that'll do a thing at least. Yeah, they have terrific blocks here, man. So how do I want to do this? And we're at 11, so we got to be very careful. Like These could be surprise. Or we could tap it down. We, we could force some blocks this turn. Ooh, Commando's going to deal one. So I want to tap the Epicure. And you. And you. The red source open, right? Look at this. Look at this, man. Holy cow. So we're forcing blocks. Yep. They go for a double block onto one of those. They're taking 10 here, guys. Wow. And the trade into the Carnosaur. Wow. Kamano comes down. Pings him for one. Down to two. <laughs> Let's see it. Let's see it, Dinos. Do you got the 11? Um, Because they could go the one. Okay. Hammer Skull. Do they have the one that gives haste? Because they had five mana open after the hammer skull. Frank will frill back. Oh, nice. Gain a little bit of life. And uh, hit our Kamano, right? So that doesn't flip. Or are they going to hit a blood token instead? Okay, they don't want us to be able to sacrifice the harvester. They go for the swing. Um, We take the four. Yes. Okay, it is six to seven, guys. Okay, should I trade that out? 
I should trade that out, right? Yeah. Yeah, see what we see. Because we could see Thrill Seeker off the top, off the board. <gasps> or that, yeah. Or that. <laughs> Worth the trade, dude. Holy cow. Full swing. I don't, I don't even care where these blocks are. Um, Socialite has the menace, too. So even if they have great blocks, we're gaining a good chunk. Commando flips next turn. They go for the block on everything. Down to one. We're up to 12. Wait a minute. I didn't just I didn't just lose the game with that full swing, did I? They had really good blocks there. A commando flips next turn. Trumpeting connoisseur, dude. Oh crap, hulking raptor. Hey, look at this MVP here in the grave. Tranquil throwback with the life gain. Okay, take the four, sure. Down to eight. And the Vigilance on the Stompers have been super brutal, too. Um, one, two... Do we have it? We have it here, right? Well, first, I'll trade this out. Because the Menace on the Socialite should get through regardless. They don't have enough blockers for all that. Right? <laughs> I don't know why I can't, I can't think that through right now. Yeah, they, they can block the three effectively. If I keep everything back, we probably... It's not not a great idea. I think the menace on the socialite gets us there regardless. Yeah, because we're going to get the two through. But it depends what they had in hand as well, so... Walking raptors out of the equation. Because they had two open, it could have been burned for the etching. But yeah, the, the menace, menace goes a very long way in certain matches... Cool stuff, man. Cool stuff. Taking down dinos. That was scary for a second, as my swing last turn could have been really, really bad. Uh, Tranquil throwback. That that four life really went a long way that game. So this one is dinos with uh, like the ramping side of things. They have glimpse the core and like the stomper. Uh, they had a ton of mana really fast. The stompers able to block uh, and swing that soon was super scary business, man. Yeah, it was still worth trading that land out with the with the blood token just because we didn't know what their last card in hand was too. So what do we got? What pack do we got here? Ooh, Lost Caverns. Awesome. Let's see what we get. Oh, Brighted Net. Cool. <laughs> so this is one that we could have uh, considered. I should have at least put it in the honorable mentions for our um, Azorus stun counter build, right? Because... It comes in with three net counters on it. Then you can tap it, remove a net counter from braided net, and tap another target non-land permanent. Its activated abilities can't be activated for as long as it remains tapped. That's a pretty cool ability, um, but it also has like that craft with artifacts. So like in the honorable mentions at the very least, right? So activated abilities, what all does that take out? Oh, and does it read, does it read permanent? Can we do that to uh, planeswalkers? Oh, it's not up at the top here. Oh, it's because there's no blue in this build. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, that was my fourth one for some reason. Yeah, target non-land permanent and activated ability. I think we can put that on planeswalkers. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Like it. A neat one. Wait a minute. Get rid of that blue. Okay. <laughs> Here's the deck list again, guys. I like it. It felt good, man. Like, yeah, sure, like, the meta's gonna be brutal no matter what, especially if you're playing anything off meta, like, you're gonna, you're gonna have a rough time sometimes, like we saw in that mono red list against that Orzhov build, man, that, that Orzhov build was disgusting, I'd, I'd much rather lose to mono red, uh, like, three times in a row than go up against an Orzhov list like that, dude, huh? I'll tell you what, <laughs> Although, I, I can't complain too much. It definitely gives us a really solid puzzle to think around and think through. So, uh, Whereas, in contrast to that, of course, Mono Red sometimes doesn't even let you think through that puzzle. Sometimes it's over before you even get the chance to. So, yeah, okay, Orzhov. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that much. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Preacher of the Schism. Huge target on his back, huh? Died pretty fast. We swung with it that one time, and then the Wandering Emperor picked it up. Dude, I'm just now looking at the token artwork. That is terrifying, dude. Oh my goodness. That is that is a genuinely terrifying vampire. 
Like, what's even going on there, too? With, like, the candles and the chains? Okay, anyways. Uh, I can see dropping down to one of these quite successfully, as the rest of the build is being super aggressive, but Preacher the Schism is kind of set there to build up more of a, a long game value. But I like the card draw on this uh, as well, so I'd still keep it in the build, but I could see dropping down to one of these. Maybe go up that lightning strike that was in the honorable mentions. That could do a thing. It could. It really could. I like the double adversaries. That was cool. Uh, all the like all the vampires did the thing, and they did the thing well. There were a lot of moments where vampire socialite was just kind of our awkward two mana, uh, or yeah, our awkward turn to play where it just like doesn't do anything. But guess what? The menace really comes in handy, doesn't it? And and in that last build, without that menace, they would have been able to block all four of our creatures easily. So I like it as the four of actually, yeah, pretty sick. Well, Darren, uh, thrill seeker. Oh man, I love this card so much, dude. Holy cow! Yeah, this was this was a really fun time. Uh, as of right now, like more more testing required, and I need to play with it more. But this might be one of my favorite like versions of vampires that we put together for the channel, guys. Really, it, like it it felt great. It curved out nicely, and boy, did it draw well overall. Sometimes it felt like we had more than 23 land in here, but that's just Magic the Gathering. That's just how that works, you know what I mean? 23 land was kind of perfect. I wouldn't go up any, wouldn't go down any. And overall, we didn't get held up on the mana base too much. I think it's fine. Uh, Restless Vents. There's going to be a lot of moments where these Restless Lands can get you there, especially against control builds. They happen to be pretty important. But I could see dropping this for more fast land too. I could. But I, I, I don't think I would personally do it, but I could see doing it. You know what I mean? So, and maybe at that point, maybe you want to go up like a couple Valdarian Estates. I, again, I wouldn't do that either. There's going to be a lot of moments where you just really don't want to pay that one life. And then unfortunately, like Estate can't play the Bitter Triumph or the Kamano. And speaking of Bitter Triumph, guys, didn't really get to see it come into play today. Do we want more of these? Maybe. If we end up dropping that Preacher of the Schism, maybe we go up more removal too. Like, instead of that lightning strike, maybe the third bitter triumph. At that point, if you end up having to pay three life at all, that is a lot of life to pay. Uh, but it's a small price to pay to pick up, like, a shieldred or something. Or something uh, more important, like a giant planeswalker that's gotten out of hand. Uh, and, of course, if you do have that discard with, like, the Baron, then that's just, like, card advantage. So that's pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's all I have to say about it. I really enjoyed this one. <laughs> Guys, if you made it this far into the video for real, y'all are champions and definitely let me know what you would add or take out. What does your vampire build look like? Um, I've been seeing, I haven't been playing against a lot of vampires, but I've been seeing a lot of uh, people sharing vampires. So yeah, let me know what your vampire list looks like. Alrighty, I will see y'all in the next video.